or bright. Here we are at our 1986 Stardust Cruisers. This is a 14 by 60 foot aluminum hull houseboat for sale. We're here today on the beautiful fresh waters of North Lake, Tennessee. This slip is transferable. If you're looking for a place to keep it, we are what, what I consider to be the Knoxville corner of the lake. Fairly convenient to I-75 exit 122, which is the Clinton, uh, excuse me, the Clinton Norris exit. And, um, in Tennessee. This is powered by a single Evan Rude outboard. It's actually a um, 88 special two stroke outboard motor. This boat likely was a rental boat at one time in its, in its history. It has been probably owned most recently here on Norris Lake. Here for our video walkthrough tour, as usual, you will find the full list of specifications, features, current asking prices, as well as all of our contact information all over at our website, which is at yournewboat.com. Now, for your convenience, there will be a direct link to this listing down in the video description. I'll take you right to the listing page for this one. Again, that is there for your convenience. Uh, if you're watching this on a device that does, does not allow you to see that video description, feel free to just grab a smartphone or web browser of your choice. Just type in yournewboat.com or www.yournewboat.com. Either way, it'll get you there. You're going to see that orange lettering. You're going to want to click that Find Your New Boat button in the top left-hand corner, and that will load all of our inventory and order price. So all you got to do is scroll down to get to, to this one again. It's the 1986 Stardust Cruisers, 14 by 60 foot, aluminum hall houseboat for sale. And as you notice, um, now we've stepped inside, we are on a completely single level interior. We've got some uh, linoleum flooring throughout this one. This is what we consider to be the hall bunk layouts, probably one of the most common layouts that you'll see, uh, especially down in the entry level aluminum houseboats. You're gonna see this same layout with a couple different variations. And of course, pricing is really gonna depend on, um, on all the included equipment. So right here in our main salon, obviously we got two Patio sliding doors. Um, our windows and doors are all single pane, uh, aluminum frame windows and doors. Typical of this vintage um, age of houseboat. We do have a nice reclining leather sofa right here in our main living room galley area. And we've got a 39 inch, that's an Emerson LED HD television mounted there just above our driver's helm. Driver's helm's pretty plain and simple here. We've got your steering controls. There's going to be a transfer switch for shore power or generator power. We've got a small little 12-volt cigarette lighter and our, um, our meter for that um, Evan Rude 88 Special is showing 298 hours. Actually, that might be for that color generator. Um, I do need to mention uh, this one is equipped with a color generator. However, it is not operable and has not been operable in some time. Uh, if you were looking for um, a way to get a generator on board here, you might look into um, a large air-cooled on a generator just to keep on the rear deck. Um, that's going to be your most um, affordable option if you do want um, some generator power. And then we've also got AEMF film. CD stereo uh, here at the um, helm station. There are about six speakers throughout. I believe we got four inside and two on the exterior. I should go ahead and point out um, any fishing equipment that you see, um, depending on how far I pan out, um, all of that fishing equipment is excluded. Exclusions on this one are essentially are uh, some handful of personal items and toiletries, uh, clothing, fishing equipment, some water toys, and a kid toys. Uh, we've got a handful of those as well. We do have two electric refrigerators. Originally at one time, this refrigerator that you're looking at about the center of the frame now would have been a uh, camper style or RV style uh, gas electric refrigerator, like a dual source refrigerator. Um, and that was uh, changed out for a all electric refrigerator, which is there now. Um, they were able to essentially um, fill that exact same uh, compartment that previously held that gas electric fridge with that fully electric refrigerator. We do have a uh, gas oven and range here. That is a four burner Magic Chef oven and range. 
this little burnish came out of place right there. Um, that is still operable. And uh, it does run off propane. I'll, I'll point out the propane tank for that one here a little bit later on. And overhead of that four burner gas oven and range, we've got a electric whirlpool microwave, double stainless sink. And across from all that is this gonna be this magic chef. Again, the electric freestanding refrigerator and freezer. So, all right, we're gonna move on back. So again, this is our hall bunk layout. What we mean by that is we're gonna have um, a set of bunk beds in a hallway. It's gonna share a bathroom access with your master stateroom. I'm gonna back up just a little bit here so you can see all this. So we're gonna have a pocket door right here and we've got pocket doors throughout. So I'll demonstrate this here just briefly. So if you are out overnight with some company, you, you essentially are all gonna have a private um, stateroom. Again, these are up here full size bunk beds right here in the hallway. And again, it's going to share a bathroom with uh, with the master stateroom. Essentially, with these pocket doors, it's going to allow everyone to have shared access to this bathroom right here. Back here in the master stateroom, you slide that open, and you're right in, into that bathroom there. So, you also sometimes see this same layout with um, a step down on the interior level and also on the roof. Those steps would are generally going to be right there at the start of this hallway. And again, these are um, these are two full size bunk beds. We do have some storage underneath this bottom bunk, and each one's got um, a little um, window as well as some twelve volt reading lights. I do want to take the time to point out if you notice, we get a little bit of slope in the ceiling right here, and this is. A bit of an older style ceiling. Um, again, it's going to be um, very common in this vintage houseboat. Um, so this right here is, is essentially a removable strip right here. And essentially all that's happened right here is this this part of the ceiling right here is just kind of fall da fallen down um, from the um, studs. You're going to have some studs that are running essentially right under this little tack strip right here and essentially you've got staples that just kind of hold these um, ceilings into place and that's essentially all that's really happened here is those staples have just kind of come out of place right here and this just needs to be uh, pushed back up and then restapled so to do so you'd kind of pull this tack strip out of the way uh, push this up there resecure that and then um, essentially just put that tack strip right back in so just want to point that out. It's essentially just a little cosmetic fix right there. Um, it's not a, not necessarily a sign of, uh, you know, uh, anything wrong with the exterior roof. Um, we'll get to the roof uh, a little bit later on when we do go upstairs. So, and essentially, while we're on that subject, so this is essentially what you're looking at um, kind of underneath that, those ceiling panels right there is just your, um, studs spanning essentially the full uh, width of the roof. And then you've got marine gray plywood um, that's gonna be on top of that. And of course on the exterior side, that's covered with uh, fiberglass and then a gel coat or any kind of a um, material similar to gel coat. It's just gonna um, seal out moisture and give you a nice surface to walk on. So in this particular vintage of boat, um, they left essentially the ceiling here in the front half of the boat uh, kind of open so a lot of people use that to put life jackets and, and of course fishing equipment things like that up there some people really like the look of having those beams exposed but that is um, pretty much standard with this uh, vintage uh, boat we, we do have a small little uh, storage closet right here in this hallway now you may have also noticed the uh, roof air conditioning units I should go ahead and point out this this one front one up here is let's see electric heat only 
Okay, so that has a little bit of a heat pump in it. And then the back AC is gonna be air conditioning with heat strips. Now, you may also have noticed right here in our hallway right here, we've got a small, um, this is gonna be your uh, thermostat for central heat and air. This does, is equipped with a uh, one and a half ton pane central heat and air conditioning unit, HVAC unit. And actually there's gonna be one of the air returns right there. And then throughout you do have the, the floor vents. So a lot of people, when they do add central heat and air to this uh, model boat, they will eventually, when that roof is due for work, um, they'll remove those air conditioning units. So, but they are operable, like I said, uh, right now that front unit is gonna be heat only. And then here in the master stateroom, you've got heat and air conditioning. All right, let me step back here just so you can see that layout. So yes, there is uh, kind of a beam right in there. I've, I've had people kind of look at this uh, photographs of this model, not really sure what was going on here. Um, we did kind of demonstrate those pocket doors a little bit earlier. So here's our uh, walk-in shower. And then this is equipped with a incinolet toilet or, or head. So this is an electric incinerating toilet. And with the incinolets, you do not have to have um, a holding tank or uh, you will not have to have your waste uh, holding tank pumped out. So these are fairly simple to use. The little box of liners there has got instructions on it right there. You just simply put the liner in the bowl and when you're done, flush with the foot pedestal. And then you're gonna push that little button there to start that incinerator. And then your waste turns into essentially an odorless ash um, that is safe to just simply be um, put in your um, household garbage. So now we do have a nice family sink right around opposite of that. Got a little storage underneath that sink. And then again, we, we do have this walk-in shower. All right, we'll back out of there. And we have pointed out our full-size bunk beds. And then moving on to our master stateroom. This is gonna be a queen size master bed. And as you will notice, you've got good walk around access on both sides of your master bed here. And you've even got plenty of room if you do wish to have a little bit larger bed, you're gonna have plenty of room to do that as well. And then um, just overhead is gonna be two of those four interior stereo speakers. A uh, little knob right here. This is actually the knob that actually turns these on and off as opposed to having um, zone controls up near the front of the boat. Anybody um, near the speakers can, can turn theirs off if, if they do not wish to hear the music being played. So now back here in our master stateroom, we've also got two linen closets, small little built-in dresser, and that right there is going to be a 1400-watt little electric heater. So that can be utilized as well. So I think that's going to do it for now here on the interior. Let's go ahead and step out our rear sliding door and take a look at our rear deck here. So again, this is all aluminum. Now we do have some carpeting over top your aluminum decking. Um, and this carpet is um, is pretty aged and you know could be in need to be in replacement. Again, this is a cosmetic fix right here because under this is just simply aluminum. So by not replacing that carpet, you're you are not doing the boat any harm whatsoever. Um, and here's that exterior heat pump again for that pane. That is a one half uh, ton HVAC system. And we've got a Professional char griller, griller or grill and smoker with a um, side burner as well, and some storage features back here on the rear deck as well as some small little storage closet. Now, that Evan Root 88 Special Outboard, it's going to be 88 horsepower, two stroke outboard motor, is concealed right underneath this little aluminum hatch right here, and they've just simply covered this. Uh, so that, that can, space can be utilized as um, duct space right there. So. 
Now, the beauty of an outboard on an aluminum hull boat is there are no outdrive seals to have to worry about. So this one essentially never going to have to come out of the water for outdrive service. Now, that Kohler generator, again, that is inoperable. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. It's going to be under the center hatch here. Uh, we've also got an onboard battery charger. Um, and essentially, this pretty much this entire engine room is being utilized as storage space. There are going to be a pair of 50 gallon onboard aluminum fuel tanks. Uh, that right there is going to be that oil reservoir because uh, that is a two stroke outboard motor. So it is going to mix um, that oil uh, when it runs with the, uh, with the gas. It's going to be a Halon fire suppression system. And again, this is that color generator. So, you know, if you were wanted to tinker with something, you could certainly uh, do so right here but but i will say these these color generators especially when they're set um these older models like this um you, you're not going to want to invest a whole lot of money to get that operable um, again if you do want to work in generator you're going to be better off uh replacing that all together or, or simply putting an air-cooled generator back here on the deck now the air-cooled generators uh will not have enough uh, circulation to be down inside this whole space right here so if you do want something to conceal down this whole space that's where you are going to want to opt for a uh, marine water-cooled um, exhaust generator otherwise air-cooled generator simply sitting on the top deck here's going to be those two approximately 50 gallon aluminum fuel tanks and then cross all the way across uh, from where we're at right now over there on the starboard side wall we're going to have a um, pro mariner onboard battery charge over there as well so, let me climb on out of here. We're going to close this hatch. Okay. We've discussed everything we need to discuss back here. Uh, we are going to have a little um, swim boarding ladder that is, uh, what, about a four step swim boarding ladder going right down there to the water. And we're going to use this ladder right here to go up to our roof deck. And as you can see, we do have some cracking in here. This is this is not uh, gel coat on the surface right now. Somebody's opted for uh, something else. And and really, today's world gel coat is not as good as it used to be. EPA took some ingredients out of that, um, and that was for good reason. But when they did that, it does not cure quite as well, especially when applied outdoors. So if you if you are going to opt for gel coat, it really needs to be done in a controlled um, indoor environment. Um, because it is very, it can, it can just be a little bit challenging to work with. Um, so now at one time this did have a, uh, water slide and that those mounts is what that is for. Um, you could easily remount your water slide up there if you so desired, uh, because all of the, all those, um, brackets are still in place. So now what they have uh, done is that whenever they did apply this uh, material, they did go over top of your rail feet, which is a good thing. These rail feet are generally going to be um, the source of most of your water leaks in a houseboat uh, roof. Uh, but as you can also see, uh, this this uh, material here is, is cracking and uh, coming up like that. So areas like this are going to be uh, susceptible to some moisture intrusion. And we've got kind of a handful of those crackings throughout. So this roof is in need of being recoated. Um, and a lot of times, you know, we will just say gel coat it just because that's always kind of been the generic term for your roof coatings. But yes, today's world, there's going to be several products that are going to have a much uh, easier application um, and also will hold up a lot longer than today's gel coat. So feel free to reach out to us to discuss options. Uh, and again, right in here, you're going to see some more of that little bit of light surface cracking. This is this is not as uh, bad as some of those areas over there on the side, but any of those cracks are going to be areas that would be susceptible to some moisture intrusion, and that is what you want to avoid. So this area right over here is, is um, the area above those bunk beds where you did have that interior ceiling coming down. I, I don't think it has anything to do with the exterior ceiling up here. Uh, typically, if you do have... 
uh, some major moisture intrusion. You're going to see obvious signs of that on the exterior. And the roof's also going to give when you're walking around on it. Now, Rain Surveyor is going to be able to tell you with a lot more confidence. They're going to carry the equipment, uh, namely a moisture meter, and they'll also do some percussion testing uh, throughout any houseboat's uh, roof and sidewalls. Those are all areas uh, that can be prone to, to getting some moisture coming in. Now, this pipe right here, that is the vent for that incinerator toilet. So I just want to call your attention to that. And then these propane, this propane tank right here, that um, actually can accept another one. That's going to be the propane for that Magic Chef four burner gas oven and range. And at one time also ran the uh, generator, or I'm sorry, the refrigerator down in there as well. But again, those refrigerators have been changed out to uh, fully electric. So that's just for your oven and range right now. Now, even though we are one, one level interior, still kind of got the little step down on the roof. Uh, again, that's going to be common with this vintage of uh, aluminum house pro. They, they really did not start doing um, the all one level roof roofs until I want to say late 80s early 90s so and then here's that um, other roof unit for the um, living room and galley area got a small little patio table and chairs up here and then of course um, that will also hold your weight out there uh, they put the railing basically just where the cabin is because they don't want anybody having a party or a picnic um, or a hot tub or anything like that out there. So that's that's generally your rails are always going to stop here. Uh, when we were photographing this, we actually went out over that area and got some photos looking back to this roof area. So now this probably looks bad, but we don't really have any cracking right here. This is just somebody that was extra generous uh, with whatever... Um, product they did use on the roof up here so they just they just went over that area several times doesn't look great but it did accomplish the job of sealing that roof out for some moisture um two little surface cracks starting to show there but not did not appear like they've gone through yet this i'm gonna guess is probably just some discoloration from some maybe some rusting that some of this furniture is doing up here so so generally once we've kind of done the full walkthrough is when we like to kind of go over the wear and tear portion. We've been kind of doing that as we went along, especially up here on the roof area. Uh, it does need to be recoded. I, I have not seen any um, signs of any active water leaks at all. And I'll point a few things out to you on the interior. Before we do that, I'm going to walk down this um, side right here we do have catwalks right here so if you ever wonder what that wb stands for in our houseboat listings the wb stands for wide body that's when your cabin wall goes all the way to the edge right here uh, if you're someone likes to take the boat out um, go out in a cove and maybe take your runabout or pontoon with you these catwalks are actually really handy um, and they can also come in handy when you're docking as well because now you can easily get down the side of the boat uh, whereas on the wide body models you, you can't really do anything you've got to go up and over to get from uh front to back or go through the interior so this one uh, you certainly got um, plenty of options Let me back up here get you a shot just right here in the slip again this slip is transferable if anybody wants to keep it here i uh, would have the opportunity to continue this uh, leash right here at this particular slip and then what i also want to point out as we go alongside, this is your hull of the deck joint. This is another common area where your um, sidewalls will uh, collect moisture intrusion. We've got a nice bead of caulking down there. A few little cracks um, in this area right here, but that caulking also looks nice and thick. Uh, this is something any houseboat owner wants to uh, pay attention to and keep an eye on and, um, and reapply this caulking when needed. They've also got um, some good caulking around the windows. A little bit of cracking right in here, so that could, uh, that could use some attention. And then up here as well. Now, because we have the catwalks, you notice we got a little bit of an overhang up there. And that's actually going to really uh, protect your windows from a lot of moisture intrusion. Um, so the catwalk's not always a bad thing. We do have some kind of some cracks in that caulking um, on the top frame of this window. Uh, lower portion looks pretty good. Uh, a few little cracks right there. This one probably needs to be um, re or have that caulking reapplied. Um, in the near future. But again, having that little bit of overhang, um, it's amazing how much that will uh, kind of help prevent 
a lot of moisture intrusion around the windows on these boats with the catwalks. Uh, that hole of the deck joint looks really good down most of this side. And again, your windows are a little bit more protected. Uh, some of these could use some attention on the windows. Um, if I had to guess, they, um, that hull of the deck joint was probably uh, more recently done. And they may have just uh, did some touch-ups around those windows there. This used to house a, a small, uh, likely a propane uh, water heater, uh, about a six gallon. Again, it's kind of the RV style. Um, this now has a 19-gallon uh, electric water heater. It's, uh, it's down in the hull space of this one. So uh, this is just an access panel that's still here, uh, but essentially there's, there's no real purpose for it. Um, and so there may be some, well, actually, no, they've got some good caulking down there in those gaps right there. It looks, looks, um, looks bad. Um, and then as I push in, you see that wall move there? That's essentially a sign of some old uh, water intrusion or moisture intrusion. Um, that caulking might need to be touched up a little bit right there. Some water could still be getting in that area right there. Um, up here above that, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, now we've also kind of got some cracks in this exterior part of this wall. This is basically fiberglass and pressure laminated to uh, marine grade plywood. And this makes up your, your houseboat walls. These areas right here, when I see something like that, you do want to get something on there, even if it's some caulking, just to seal that out from any moisture intrusion. And we've got a few spots, um, like right in here, that also could use some attention. Uh, this is where somebody has mounted something to um, the interior walls, and those screws have kind of gone through. So when they've done that, they've kind of punctured that outer layer of that fiberglass. Um, those, at the very least, need to have just some caulking on there just to prevent some moisture intrusion from the back end of those screws. Um, that right there is going to be access panel for that refrigerator as well as down here. Again, uh, originally this had that um, RV style gas electric refrigerator. No longer does now. So those are just uh, access panels that are actually going to be right behind that electric refrigerator that's in there right now. Alright, moving on up to the front. Uh, carpeting up here on the front deck is not nearly as bad as that rear deck, but all that is essentially um, cosmetic issues. I do want to point out here on the interior before we finish up here, um, they have replaced some of their subfloors in here and carpets kind of covering this up. But I just want to point this out to you. We, we always make every effort to represent our listings exactly as possible. Um, obviously, this is something anybody's going to see. Um, with pretty little effort, they came to see it in person. We like we like you to know about these things in advance. So um, again, they've they've simply um, traded out or um, replaced some sheets of plywood or part of this subfloor right here, and they have not refloored the interior of the boat. So just want to point that out. You do have that area uh, just under this rug right here where that happened, and then over here, this is going to be your access point to get down into that. Um, hall storage space and this does not have um, any kind of flooring over this has been just been painted over but you, as you can also see we've got some hinges back there um, this this area or this hatch right here actually lifts up gives you access to that uh, interior hall space down in the uh, well below the floor here so you're going to have your uh, plumbing and your electrical um, all down underneath the, this boat or down in the hull of this boat is simply uh, below our uh, flooring right here and you've also got your fresh water holding tanks this boat is equipped with um it's actually equipped with four um approximately 70 gallon aluminum tanks i believe two of those have been being used for fresh water um, the other two were basically pulled out of that loop probably at one time uh was going to be maybe used for a waste holding tank but they've opted for that incinerator toilet so um, there are f approximately four tanks down there, uh, but they are aluminum, so they really should only be used for fresh water. Um, but you could put a uh, plastic holding tank down there if you did want to go away from that electric incinerator toilet. So just want to call your attention to those few things right there. Um, that should start to wrap things up now. Again, this is that 1986 Stardust Cruisers 14 by 60 foot aluminum hull. 
houseboat for sale again here on the beautiful fresh waters in North Lake, Tennessee. This slip, like I said, is transferable. Someone can keep it right here if they desire. And I think we covered about everything on this one. Well, we do we do recommend reach out to us through the website if you got any questions about this one. If you want to set up a time to come view this, uh, make an offer, anything like that. We do not monitor that YouTube comment page. So if you do have any questions, please reach out to us through our website. Again, for your convenience, down in that uh, video description is going to be the direct link to the listing page for this one. Once you do make it there, you're going to see the asking price. You're going to see all of our contact information where you can reach out to us by phone, by text, or by email, whatever's most convenient for you. Uh, we do like to remind you, if you call us on the phone and you get our voicemail, keep in mind we are very often in areas without cell phone reception. So please make sure you leave us a message. If you do want better, um, leave, us, leave us a detailed message. Let us know which listing you're looking at, what questions you have. As soon as we either return to sales service area or finish up with a client, we'll be able to return that call, have all those questions answered for you. Um, and then if you send us an email through our website, generally get those uh, email replies back out to you within one business day. But um, if it has been one business day, you have not seen reply, please be sure to check your spam folder. How rate of our replies end up in customer spam folders. And otherwise, feel free to send us a text as well. Really, whatever is most convenient for you. So you'll, you should see a photo of this one again at the website. Be able to uh, recognize it pretty easily. Again, it's the 1986 Stardust Cruisers 14 by 60 foot aluminum hull houseboat for sale. Again, here with beautiful fresh waters in North Lake, Tennessee. Again, outboard powered with one queen bed, a pair of full size bunk beds, one bath, central heat and air. I thank you again for joining us. If you do have any questions, please reach out to us through our website. And we'll see you next time.